Hello everyone and welcome to my New York City urban garden. We had a lot of rain last week and a crazy storm yesterday. But the garden is looking fine today. It's nice and beautiful and lush. Fortunately, we didn't have any casualties. Some of my neighbors had uh, some of their plants snipped off and broken. Thankfully, in my garden, everything's okay. I was actually not home when that happened, so I was very worried when I was working. And I came home to um, everything being fine, so I feel pretty fortunate. If you are new here, this is going to be week eight of this urban garden tour. So you can actually track the progress of my garden for two months now. I did start a little early because I had some overwintered plants. So I started a little bit earlier than most people that are doing garden tours, but I wanted to really document the whole journey. And that's why I decided to do it that way. Now, because I've been doing this for two months, this garden tour is going to be a bit more detailed. I also want to talk about garden bugs. I am gardening organically. I do not add any pesticides or anything to this garden. Actually, I haven't even added, I want to talk about that too, I haven't even added neem oil or BT or anything. I'll explain why. I'm trying to encourage good bugs or beneficial insects to come here and help me with the pest control. More to that coming in the video. First, I'm gonna go into the garden. I'm gonna give a tour. I'm gonna show everything that I'm growing. Everything in detail of the things that are growing in my garden right now. So, let's start. First of all, let me start showing something really sweet. Someone just left this here for me. It's my neighbor. He has already left some books and other things. This is the entrance to my place. So he just left me these tomato starts and the seeds that he probably started the tomatoes from and this catalog here. I'm gonna open this later and show. But look at that, there's this definitely kindness in the city too. All right, I'll start on the raised bed here for a change today. Uh, I have, these are tomatillos. I don't know if I've showed this in videos before, but they are giving me some flowers already. And with tomatillos, they, they need more than one plant to actually be able to pollinate and produce fruit. So I have two here that I started earlier. And I put it a start here that was not doing really good. It was yellow and dying, but it kind of picked up and is doing really well now. So I might have three plants in here, which is pretty cool. I scattered some carrots here early in the season, all over as you can see. And uh, just to see if they would grow in between my bigger crops because I am I do have very limited space since I am in the city and they have been doing well so far. I have I'm I plant things very closely together so it's densely planted. I am experimenting with this so there I'm not sure if things are gonna work out or not but so far so good. I'm also willing to pull things out if I really think that they're hurting because they don't have enough nutrients to grow. So here I have a couple sunflowers. Last year I had a bunch of sunflowers in here and they were lovely. So I wanted to grow them again. I have a silver slice with cucumber that I like to hopefully will pick up in this fence here and will take over. Once these peas are gone, which will be really soon, they're, it's getting too hot for them. The cucumber hopefully will vine up and take up the space. There are uh, sugar, magnolia sugar tender peas. They have purple pods. But they also sometimes produce some green pods. If you see here, this nice vine that I have here, some of them are producing green peas. I had just a discussion with a local gardener because of that, because she's telling me she bought this is the same place that I did and she only has green peas. So I came to look and I saw that they are the same vines. I planted a green pea variety below here. This is sugar snap. But you can see that those are the same because it has this little purple thing here and they're much taller and sturdier vines so the ones that are all on top they're the same variety and I s did see some purple flowers like this and then it's the same green pot and my, one of my earliest videos I also show you how to harvest peas that's when I harvested a lot of the peas that were below here this really just took over and it's doing really good it's kind of shading my tomato in the corner which I'm not super happy about but it looks so nice I'll let it go um, until it gets too hot for them and we'll experiment and see. Now we're gonna have I'm gonna harvest this. If you saw my previous video say that you should always use two hands, right? And you should try to snap. You always hold this part over here and then you pull this. Because if you just pull the pea, sometimes you sacrifice the whole plant. Those vines are sturdy but also can be fragile. So if you pull just like that, you can pull the whole plant out and just sacrifice your plant. So I always when harvesting peas, I always try to hold this part over here or the vine. And then you get the pea and you pull it. Okay, so I was the camera was holding my arms. And there you go. So you have this beautiful pea harvested. I've been harvesting this every morning because it's producing so much. 
once your peas kind of get going you want to try to harvest them daily because you want to keep your vines prolific productive you want to there's more even seeds every day so I'll come here there's another one here that's ready okay all right moving on from these beautiful vines before i want to pick the other ones too look at these flowers last week i didn't have flowers on them bees love them they're edible they actually taste like cucumber so when i work in fine dining we used to garnish these very fancy plates with them all the time that's how i know about boars and why i'm growing them and they're delicious and they're very pretty so i really love growing them they're great in drinks and i like to freeze them in ice cubes they get really pretty and then use that for drinks later all right moving on here remember that tomato we pollinated also a couple weeks ago look what's happening over here we have baby tomatoes those are the atomic grape variety from a uh, white boar's farm i bought them at baker creek but they are a uh, white boar farm variety first time i had it was also when i was working here in new york city in a restaurant and i talked the tomatoes were, were amazing so i wanted to get my hands on them and I bought this variety. They're obviously still small and green, but they're supposed to have these beautiful colors all over. I'm very excited to see that since we're here and there's tomato flowers. I already did that in the other video, but this is how I pollinate them. I just go with my finger and you just kind of move them around. You can also, when the plants are really big later, just give the whole plant a shake and they'll help pollinating too. Tomatoes are perfect flowers, so they have the male and female organ the same flowers. So you only need one to pollinate so you can do that by hand very easily same with peppers and eggplants you can use the same method so i have peppers here too you can see that that pepper i'm already producing a pepper inside it so i don't need to pollinate oh i have a baby pepper look at that bell pepper yay so excited this plant was actually overwintered i had it growing last year i kept inside for the winter and then put it out now it's doing really good so that way you can have fat peppers faster i have changed some of my tomatoes in here you see this home depot buckets the, those are new i drill holes on the side as you can see there's one there and also on the bottom of this and then i filled up with compost and potting soil this is a crazy berry tomato i'm gonna pollinate those guys too every time i, I walk through them i like to pollinate them this one is a mystery tomato i lost the tag i don't know what it is but we'll see once it starts setting fruit i also have some baby cherry tomatoes growing there that one i think is a purple cream tomato i also lost the tag i lost the tag of most of my cherry tomatoes but i'm planting them anyways and will produce so i'm happy anyways it's beautiful calendula it's going to open soon hopefully when i come back from the plot garden it will be a bit more open and we can see the process i love this so pretty this is from botanical interests i tried to tag to put the variety here on the uh, screen but now this is kind of there's a lot of pots in my garden right now and i keep meaning to organize this and to make it into a better pathway but i also keep adding plants so you know i'm gonna take some to the other garden i think this is a puma pepper that i'm obsessed with it's also from baker quick seeds look at these leaves they're beautiful they're not setting any flowers yet i see the little buds but no flowers yet and they have this beautiful orange purplish yellow pepper that i can't wait to share with you guys how it's going to look like this is this beautiful eggplant this is a patio baby eggplant i think i've been showing that in the garden tours too it's growing this pot i think it's a three gallon or two gallon pot it's not that big but i wanted to grow in a smaller pot to show that you can grow with limited space you can also grow lovely things so i got these seeds from johnny seeds it's a uh, it's bred to be a smaller variety it's going to be very prolific the word you want to look for when you have limited space one of the things that produce a lot for you look at that those flowers are going to come up really soon oh there's one flower there we go that flower is opening over there hopefully it's going to start setting fruit soon and this is the kale that also been showing it's been overwintered and i am letting i let it go to flower now it's producing the seed pods it's been for a while and i'm going to let it dry a little bit more and i'm going to harvest seeds from this purple kale my cilantro back there unfortunately bolted even though it is in the shady part of the garden you can see it just got too hot for it so i'm going to i think i'm going to let it go to seeds so i can harvest the seeds for cooking but also i'll harvest that le those leaves i'm not really sure if it changes the flavor that much yet i haven't i'm going to taste it and see those are some peppers that were not doing really good but i felt bad to throw them out this is not a very healthy plant right it's too little there's a pepper here but obviously it's not going to be 
it doesn't look like it's been super prolific but this side of my garden doesn't get a lot of sun so everything in here is kind of struggling sorry so but i wanted i didn't want to um, not use this space so since i love experimenting it's like, okay hey, i'm gonna plant stuff in there to the season and just see how it goes those are green onions that are planted from scraps from saving scraps the roots from the store-bought green onions i left in water and then i planted in here just to see they're doing well there's some squash around that i don't think it's gonna work but i left in there let's see this is experiment too and this kale is getting leggy very leggy so seems that there's not too much light in here but i love eating baby kale so i'm gonna let it go and grow and see how that's going to turn out to be too i have my potatoes they're looking so nice they planted this one first those are farmer's market potato i also planted this in the experiment i bought in the farmer's market left in a shady corner of my garden let it sprout and i planted here they're so health they're healthy so far those are from seed potatoes certified seed potatoes from hudson valley seed co those are the adirondack blue variety it's bred um upstate was bred upstate by cornell so i'm hoping that that's going to do very well here in my garden since it's bred for this region and the star of my gardens actually are the green stalks i always get questions about these guys because obviously I live in New York City and we have very limited space. I'm very fortunate to have this front yard here that I can grow this much food when most people don't have it. So these planters are pretty cool because you can grow up. Look at these beautiful nasturtiums. So these planters here can be super handy. I have lots of things growing. Those are still cold weather crops, the lettuce and the kale, um, the little chart. I have a video where I actually put this together and you could see the stars and the tiny little plants and seeds that I put in here. I've harvested many things so not everything's in there anymore but you can if you're curious just to see how to set this up you can check that video out too. And I have two more of them. This is, was my first one. It's probably one of the first videos. I really can't remember if I already had them the first video. I have to look back. But I had a bunch of like broccoli and cold weather stuff in there too and that I have already harvested and now it's mostly transitioned to warm weather stuff so this pansy is getting too hot for it too soon but those are beans so they're gonna produce some pink flowers and some pink beans there are some pods in there great sign i've sold some carrots from seed in here early in the season there's some peppers that i have transplanted basil and a little tomato that was not doing good but i had the pocket available so i tried to put there and just see because look at that guys this tomato and this other green stock is doing fantastic kind of incredible actually because this green stalk it's the leaf planter so has shorter pockets than this guy over here and it's supposed to be mostly for leaf greens and herbs but i wanted to just test and see if a tomato would grow in there and it's obviously doing really good what i did i planted in one of the lowest pockets and it's growing up and i bought this plant supports from from the green stock they have that available and i just tie the twine here so i don't have to have so many of them and then i've been putting the tomato as you can see here uh, rolling around so it gives it some support to grow up it's looking really healthy and really good there's another plant in here smaller this is supposed to be a determinant variety called cherry falls but it's looking really big so i don't know if i might have messed up the ties with that one too anyways this one i was planning that would fall down so let's see how that's going to work out i had a bunch of lettuce and bok choy here you can see in the previous videos too i harvested uh, because it's getting hot i am trying to transition to mostly weather hot water crops this lettuce is doing gorgeous well. look at that how big it is i need to harvest that soon before it gets too hot and starts going to seed talking about things that don't work really well i have a problem with squirrels they come and they dig a lot of my pots you can see that i planted some of the mommy in here some beans they are very dug up squirrels just come here make a mess they unplant my stuff like i had a it was a full row in here and then you can see the holes just mess it up I've seen a lot of gardeners in my region already harvesting their garlic, but mine I don't think is ready. It didn't send scapes yet, and it's supposed to be a hard neck variety. And I love garlic scapes, so I wanted to wait to see if that's going to happen. Planted this in November, overwintered here with the snow and everything, and now it's going, it's growing. I'll keep everyone updated, and we'll watch the progress together. Before we finish, I just look at this. I really love this flowers. They are from Hudson Valley Seed Co so beautiful from the same seed package it was a pansy mix i got this one uh it was all mixed up so i didn't know what's going to come up but then i got this beautiful color there's an orange one there and there's this very pretty more like the regular violets all right there's a cauliflower here forgot to talk about it earlier this is a cauliflower one of my last cold weather crops 
mostly looking pretty healthy it has some holes in the leaves but not to the extent of what I had last year it was full of hole my holes my cool other crops so I guess that's a win it's small because obviously the bed's overcrowded but I'm leaving it in there to see if it will form ahead or not and it's probably gonna be small but it's still gonna eat the leaves they look delicious you can eat cauliflower leaves just as if they're cold greens or kale I like to braise them and add them to soups and stews all right, just one more little quick uh, to the raised band here. I have, might have missed a few things. There's a tiny tomato plants in there. This one is not doing really good, you can see, but I'm leaving it there just to see if we'll make it or not. Because sometimes they're just picked back up. That's a Roma tomato. Then I have a tag. <laughs> I don't see that very often in my garden, but I actually did label that one. It's a determinate tomato. So I don't need to prune or anything. It's going to produce everything at once and then it's going to end its life. So I'm going to harvest that for tomato sauce to can. And uh, I have two peppers scattered in here. There's some shard. They have leaf miners, you see? I have been doing a lot of these holes. What I do when I have leaf miners is just take that out. I pull it out. And I'll put it in the concrete and I'll get it with my feet and I'll just like smash it. So I, I kill this. These are actually usually flies or insect bugs larvae. They lay eggs on the leaf and then the larva hatches and eats in between the leaves. So you don't want to let them fully develop and become whatever insect put the lay, lay the eggs in there and just keep like being a bad cycle and keep eating your plant so when i do my morning walks in the garden i try to pick them up. i haven't had a much a bigger problem with slugs anymore either i think it's because our birds vis visiting my garden but in the beginning i had some slugs and roly polies that were eating some stuff too but so far so good all right but this is it for the front yard and then are we gonna go to the plot garden and check out how everything is doing. Uh, there's some bird activity here. Butterflies, cabbage moths, not very good ones over here. But since I'm here, they might leave. So let's talk about the spot garden. I can't help but feel that's so exciting that actually I was lucky enough to find this little plot of land to garden here. Actually, a neighbor found me. I was gardening my front yard garden and he asked if I wanted to help managing this and plant a lot of stuff and then we can just share the harvest, look how nice. So everything is taking off now. We also have a little fig tree in here. There's a peach tree in there that's not doing really good with the leaves. I'll talk about that later. Here's the beautiful grapevine. This is really exciting. I love those roses. They're very lovely over there. Have lots of mint growing here. I'll take to make some tea. To harvest mint is pretty much just like basil. I like to go and snip the tops off so they don't flower. It's the same thing. You go. It doesn't need to be precise. Just take the tops of your plant. I'm going to make some tea with these lovely leaves. You can also have this use for cooking, but today I really feel like having some refreshing mint tea, so I'll do that. I have a few garlics in there and those are walking onions, the heirloom Egyptian onions and they produce this bulb actually on the top and they eventually they get heavy and they'll fall and they'll plant another onion that's why they're called uh, walking onions, they're perennials, they're great to have in the garden. The mine are small because they're in a small pot but I read that if you give them enough space they may can even produce like a shallow size bulb. Now mine are really tiny but I'm happy with them. I'll grow, have, I'm cultivating for my next gardens eventually when I do have more space I'll plant them down. There's a lovely zinnia, very pretty pink flower. Another one there, it's a little in the shade so that one is not doing as good as this pretty one here. The other day it rained here and I forgot a bunch of my seed packs outside and they all got wet. So what do I do? I came here with my partner and we scattered seeds everywhere. Hopefully some of them are gonna come up but they were like corn seeds, some squash seeds and bean seeds so I don't know if they're ruined or not. Oh, I see a squash sprouting here already. Look how cool is that? Wait, can you see? There's a little seed on the top. In this. Now, what kind of squash is that? We don't know, because we came here quick and did all of that. My neighbor harvested the lettuces, which I'm very glad, because I want them to eat some of the stuff here too. And these tomato plants are now looking very great, because they were the remaining of my extra starts that I just decided to put there anyways, and see if they're gonna grow. But you just to see right here on this side, this squash here starting to pick up and look good. Very happy about that one. 
Back there, I have noodle beans, Chinese noodle beans, the borscht, a tomato, because I plant tomatoes everywhere, and I put in some sunflower and corn seeds. They haven't come up yet, so. Oh, there's a sunflower here. Oh gosh, sometimes I miss stuff. Hey! So excited for sunflowers. So, so cute, beautiful. And here, I also have a baby cauliflower that I couldn't let it go of. And I planted in here. I'm not sure, it's kind of shady, so I thought it could do well. But mostly I have tomatoes here that are doing good. I have taken the time to stake, prune a lot of them. All right, great opportunity. Let's learn how to prune tomatoes here. This is a sherry, actually. So it's a sherry tomato. It's great to see here that this is a sucker. On a sherry tomato, you want to leave just go as it is. You can let the suckers go. This means this and the little, this little space, there's a always goes in an angle over here. It means that this little thing is going to become a whole new plant. So if you want to snip this off and put this in water um, and let it root and plant somewhere else, it's going to be a clone, so an entirely new plant. It's okay to let them go. They will produce fine if you let them just have all the suckers. Now, this guy over here is going to be a big heirloom tomato. You can see this flower is really big, so I know it's a heirloom. And I have tried to take some of the suckers off, and I can tell already that some already grew. So what I do, this was a leaf, also I strip all the leaves from the bottom of my tomatoes because I don't like to have any leaves touching the ground like that one is. So, I'm going to come here. I'm just going to take this leaf out. This is not a sucker, it's a regular leaf. It's not going to turn into another tomato plant. I want to show the difference. And this guy here going at an angle like this is a sucker. So I'm going to take that off because I want to encourage this plant here to grow on one stem so it produces more fruit for me. This is better for indeterminate bigger tomato plants so this is a sucker it's different than that leaf just one stem and things brushing to the side this one has leaves branching off of it so you know that it was it will be like a new plant you can even see my heavy new some flower buds in there but if you let this grow a little bigger you can take this bottom leaves off i'm going to do this as an example okay take this two off stick this in water and then you can have an entirely new tomato plant. You can even put it in the ground. Well, let's do that. It's kind of hot to do this. I don't know if it's going to survive. But you could even just plant it right here. And then let's see what's going to happen to this tomato. It might die though because it's pretty hot. Not the ideal time to do this, but hey, why not, right? This is a leaf that's going to go in my compost pile. And I have a bunch of weeds in here. Since I'm down here, I'm just going to take it off. I, sometimes I get lazy and leave all my uh, weeding in here. But what I want to do is put everything in that very rustic compost pile that I have in the back. Let's move on before I get too distracted and this video gets too long. But I'm glad I could show you how to prune tomatoes. That's what I did. I came here one time this week and I did that in all the tomato plants. They are not cherries and they're looking a bit skinnier than they were last time. But it's fine. It's healthier for them. They prevent fungal disease and also it will help them uh, have more airflow and grow into a long stem and produce bigger nicer fruit for the bigger varieties. So this one in the middle is looking really good too. So here, most of these guys here are bigger tomatoes. So I have done that. See how this one looks kind of skinny. It doesn't have any suckers on them. I pulled them out actually. No, this is a flower stem. This is a different one. I wonder if I have any tomatoes in here. I planted the tomatoes here before the tomatoes in my garden. But let's see if there is any forming. Might not. It was a little colder here. But tons of flowers. So we're going to pollinate these guys. I missed the opportunity of pollinating those there. This, I think, is a very crazy cherry because it's like so, so many flowers together. I'm going to pollinate. Shake the whole thing. Oh, there's a pepper. Oh, hello. It's a jalapeno pepper. This plant's not looking very healthy, but hey, it's okay. Hopefully, it will pick back up. A lot of my approach is this, as we're like, I'll leave it in there and see what happens. This is a cabbage mount. These guys are not very helpful in the garden. They do come here to this one. They'll lay these little eggs under your leaves. I mean, they like the things in the cabbage family, cauliflower, broccoli, kale, etc. But they also get like beets, because I had some of my beets last year. Oh, look at that. It's a perfect example. This is eaten, you see? I don't know what that is. It could have been a, uh, it's not whole, but that could have been an animal. But what they would do, they would put eggs underneath here. They didn't put in that one. And they would turn into these little green worms. And they'll come and they'll eat your plant pretty quickly. They can destroy a plant like in a couple of days. So if you have them visiting your garden and you're noticing holes in your plants, 
I recommend they just check below and get the eggs before they hatch into worms. And if you do have a worm, pick that out right away. Okay, so you don't have to deal with them destroying your plants. Now, when you have a very diverse garden, this one is not very, I mean, it's diverse, but the one in my front yard garden is a good example. You also encourage good bugs to come, so it kind of balances out. You'll have some that will come eat, but there's some predators that will come and eat them, like the birds can eat the worms and etc. So you won't have to worry about pest control very much. But more about that later in the video. I'm going to sit down and talk about it. So, okay, tomato plants, we talked about this. This is some mustard. I printed some tomatillos in here. I might have a lot of tomatillos. Those are tomatillos too. I love to make green salsa, green tomatillo salsa. So very excited if they're prolific. Again, I have at least two. They need another plant in order to pollinate and produce. There's marigolds in here. Marigolds are great companion planting. That one's not flowering, but the one in the back is. It's yellow, but the orange ones are best for pest control. Vlog gardeners say that they would repel aphids. So I think they look lovely, so I plant them anyways. And also adds diversity to a garden, which I think is very important. They're planting only one crop. My neighbor planted this. She planted all beans in one spot, which is kind of cool. They look pretty big. There's one thing there that I don't know. It looks like a squash to me. It could be a weed. This look like a squash. So I have a kale here. Reminiscence from the winter garden. It's still here. We let it grow because it's doing well. More tomatoes. The pepper bed is looking sad. So let's see how that's going to turn out for the season. More tomatoes that are pruned in there. There's some leeks. So we planted from seed a long time ago. So some of them are doing well. This one in particular in the front is doing really good. Look at that. And that's also a leaf. I think it's called King Orchard. There's a fly there probably laying eggs for leaf miners. Get out. We don't want that. Get out. So we're looking very good and green now. The rain has a lot of soluble nitrogen, so it helps the garden. It gives them like the nitrogen is the nutrient it needs for this lush green growth. In the beginning it was a little rough, things were not growing, but now it feels like everything is kind of picking up. Some more tomatoes in there. And we planted some corn in here. I put some bean seeds around and squash. We're gonna try to make sort of a tree sister bed, but we decided to also add tomatoes for variety. This is obviously a squash growing out of the compost. <laughs> that often happens. So that one is looking really healthy. Squash are really heavy feeders and they do well usually even when the compost is hot, not, not ready yet to be used. But here on this side, we have a lovely feed tree from the neighbor. I stuck some potatoes in here because I had it from Storbot that germinated. They are from Forest Market. So I put it in there and just see how that's going to go. It's a dying tomato. See, not everything works. I'm not going to leave it in there. Pepper. My neighbor planted this pepper from peppers from seeds she saved. This is going to be a lovely zinnia. It's about to open. Maybe in a couple more days. And that's it for this garden. Mostly bigger plants in here. Tomatoes, peppers, beans, more like a summer garden. This compost pile is a very rustic method. All that we do is throw our weeds, all these tomato leaves from when I pruned and let it do its thing, so we're not protecting or anything. But there's no food or fruit or anything there to attract rodents. We do live in New York City, we don't want that. So I'm just, all that lives in there is just plant trimmings. There's no sugar stuff in there. And now let's talk about pest control or how I deal with controlling bugs, good and bad bugs in the garden. Okay, so in one of my earliest videos, as I said, I have mentioned Probably by own mistake, I put the peppers out too early. I wanted to put them out there to get some sun and start acclimating. They were growing inside. And a lot of aphids got to them very early in the season. They're baby peppers and they got a lot of aphids. And I said in the video, oh, I have all these aphids. I don't want to put them back inside because I don't want to get aphids in my other starts. That's probably why a lot of my peppers are really small. They might have got stunted for being out in the cold. They were in a greenhouse with a plastic greenhouse. So the night temperatures could have got... Um, too cold for them. But that time kind of worked well for me because I didn't get a chance to use neem oil. I do have neem oil. I bought a good one. I don't have it with me right now, but I can show, I can share, I put it in the description, the link down below. But what started to happen was good bugs started moving into my garden. So because I have a, a very diverse garden, I have a small space, so I grow a lot of different stuff in there. 
I attract and give more habitat encouraging for bugs. They'll come and they'll move into your garden. And what they do, if they like there, they will eat the stuff that's not, that's detrimental for your garden. So it is a lot about balance, right? We will have the bugs that'll come and eat your plants, but there are also the other bugs that'll come and eat the bugs that eat your plants. So those are the ones that you want to encourage. So predatory wasps are good. Just be careful around kids and, and animals. They can get aggressive. I do have a yellow jacket that visit my garden and she's been fine. I have never got aggressive on us, but I know she's being eating aphids and some other stuff. There are birds that come to my garden and they eat uh, little caterpillars or worms or even slugs, which I am very thankful because the slugs can be very destructive. Then there are obviously our lovely ladybugs. You can actually go online and buy ladybug larvae and put it in your garden. And if they like it in there, they will stay. So you got to provide food and provide a habitat for them. But now, the most amazing thing is I live in New York City, right? So. I was reading these in permaculture books. I was reading, I was watching things and I was watching garden tours and instructional videos from these people that established garden in the rural areas or with a lot of space in the suburbs. And I was like, this is never gonna happen to me. I'm in the city, how come I'm gonna, how is it possible for me to attract good bugs in here? Everything's probably unbalanced. It's never gonna work. So I'm gonna have to use Nemo. I still went to, but to plant diverse things and they moved in anyway. So this is just a story of like encouragement for you. If I'm in the city, I'm in Queens and I have a garden that is healthy and then nature is kind of balancing itself out. There are predators moving to my garden and eating the pests. It means that most of us can do it. So just don't feel discouraged if you lose a lot of your things for bugs. I would take that as a lesson and I would analyze and take a look what's going on in the garden. I would encourage diversity. Some pests or insects would be attracted to a scent of the certain plant they like to eat so if you plant a lot of other things and the, the other things will mask that scent and then insect might not be able to see it right away same thing with like monoculture right if you plant all tomato plants that's all they have the bugs that like tomato plants are gonna be like hey party you know that's they can see the tomato plants there's only one smell they will go and attack and destroy it but if you have tomato plants and then you have maybe some sunflowers growing then you have some basil some marigold some lettuce on the bottom some carrots and then that can go from there because that could really encourage you to have a very healthy self-sustaining garden all right thank you for hanging out with me today i hope you learned something new and i'm going to be trying to be doing this every week for during the growing season i can't wait to see uh the, the how things are going to start growing i think that things are really going to start picking up from now on because of the sun and warm weather and rain so i'm very excited to keep sharing with you and I'll see you next time. From the time we filmed this morning, the calendula has opened a little bit more. Let's see how it looks like by the end of the day. I'm excited to see if it will be fully open.